Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on solving algebraic fractions. Well before we start let's have a look at what an algebraic fraction is. Well an algebraic fraction is a fraction whose numerator and denominator are algebraic expressions. In this tutorial we'll be looking at solving algebraic fractions using our knowledge on solving equations. Remember when we solve an equation we're working out the value of unknown letters. It's also important to have knowledge on solving basic equations addition, subtraction, division, multiplication of fractions, as well as knowledge on solving quadratic equations. So let's look at solving a simple algebraic fraction question where the denominators are integers. And we're going to use our prerequisite knowledge on addition and subtraction of fractions. Now before we look at this question, let's have a look at a very simple question involving the addition of fractions. Well, if we're asked to add these two fractions, we know we use the cross multiply method. So we know we multiply the 5 by the 3 to give me 15, the 8 by the 2 to give me 16, and the 8 by the 5 to give me 40. This works out to be 31 over 40. We're going to use the same method with this algebraic fraction question. Let's start by writing the two fractions as a single fraction using our knowledge on the cross multiply method. So working this out, we have two multiplied by our four X minus one, which is indicated here, five multiplied by the X plus four, which is indicated here, and the five multiplied by the two, which is our 10, which is here. It still equals the three. Now let's expand. Two times the four X, which is the eight X, 2 times the minus 1, which is the minus 2, 5 times the x is our 5x, and 5 times the 4, which is our 20. We still have our denominator of 10, and it still equals 3. So now let's simplify. Well, we know the 8x at the 5x is the 13x. Minus 2 at the 20 gives me my plus 18. We still have our denominator of 10, and it still equals 3. Now let's solve using our knowledge and solving basic equations. Well, I'm going to multiply both sides by 10 to give me 13x plus 18 equals our 30. Subtract our 18 to give me 13x equals 12. So therefore my final answer is x equals 12 over 13. So solving this simple equation is simply done by using our knowledge on addition and subtraction of fractions. Now let's have a look at a slightly different question. Don't worry about this question looking a little bit scary. It's exactly the same. You still want to solve our equation, but remember, we have two fractions here. So use your knowledge on addition and subtraction of fractions and write this as a single fraction. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. So using our knowledge on subtraction of fractions, let's cross multiply. Now cross multiplying means three multiplied by my three X minus two is indicated here. Four multiplied by the two X plus five is indicated here. Here is my subtraction and four times three is the 12. Notice how it still equals one minus X over six. Now let's expand. Three times our three X is nine X. 3 times our minus 2 is our minus 6. Minus 4 times the 2x is the minus 8x. Minus 4 times our 5 gives me minus 20. We still have our denominator of 12, and it still equals 1 minus x over 6. Now let's simplify our numerator. Well, 9x subtract our 8x is our x. Minus 6 subtract our 20 gives me minus 26. We still have our denominator of 12, and it still equals 1 minus x over 6. Now from here, we have a denominator of 12 on one side and 6 on the other side. So now we're going to cross multiply again. So multiply the 6 by the x minus 26 gives me 6x minus 156. And the 12 multiplied by the 1 minus x gives me 12 minus 12x. Now, using our knowledge on solving basic equations, let's collect all our x's on one side. 
So adding 12x to one side gives me 18x, subtract the 156 equals 12. Adding the 156 gives me 18x is 168, so therefore x is 28 over 3. So notice how this question looks scary, but actually you're just using your knowledge on addition and subtraction of fractions, as well as solving basic equations. So now let's have a look at a slightly harder question. Here the question wants us to solve 4 minus 2x over x plus 1, and it equals x. Now this is slightly different because our divisor is an algebraic expression, but we repeat the same process like we did before. So to simply remove the division of x plus 1, we multiply both the left-hand side and the right-hand side by x plus 1. So this means Multiplying the left-hand side by x plus 1 simply gives me 4 minus 2x, and multiplying the right-hand side by x plus 1 gives me x bracket x plus 1. Now we simply expand to give me 4 minus 2x is equal to x squared plus x. Now you might spot we have an x squared term, which indicates that we're going to be using our knowledge on solving quadratic equations. So let's move all our terms onto one side, so our quadratic equals 0. Collecting all our terms gives us x squared plus 3x minus 4. Now using our knowledge on solving quadratic equations, I can see I can factorise. In other words, two numbers that multiply together to give minus 4, but sum together to give 3. Well, factorising gives me x plus 4, x minus 1. Now remember this equals 0, so the solutions are clearly x equals minus 4 or x equals 1. Now let's have a look at our last hardest question. This combines our knowledge of fractions and where the denominator is an algebraic expression. We're asked to solve 2 over x plus 1, add x over 2x plus 3, which equals 1. See if you can give it a go, whereby you're using your knowledge on addition and subtraction of fractions in order to write our fractions as a single fraction and then use this to solve our equation. So let's start writing our two fractions as a single fraction. Because it's addition, we're going to use our knowledge on cross multiplication. So multiplying our 2x plus 3 by 2 is indicated here. Multiplying our x plus 1 by our x is indicated here. We're adding our fractions, which is here. And remember, we're multiplying those two denominators. Now notice how I've left it in factorized form, as it might help me out later on. It still equals 1. Now from here, let's expand our numerator to give me 2 times the 2x is the 4x, 2 times the 3 is the 6, x times our x is our x squared, and x times the 1 is x. So I've left my denominator to be the same as before, and it still equals 1. Now collecting our like terms on our numerator gives me x squared, 4x add our x is our 5x, and we have our 6. Notice how the denominator is the same, and it still equals 1. Now, I've kept it in factorised form to see if I can cancel out any factors. In this case, I can't. So now I'm going to simply expand. x times our 2x gives me my 2x squared. 2x times our 1 is our 2x. x times the 3 is the 3x. And 1 times our 3 is our 3. Now, simplifying that denominator gives me 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. Now from here, I'm going to remove that division of our quadratic by simply multiplying both sides by 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. This is really easy because I'm simply multiplying by 1. This gives me a quadratic on both sides. Now, using our knowledge on solving quadratics, I'm going to equate it to 0. So, subtracting my x squared from 2x squared gives me x squared. The 5x subtract our 5x is 0, and the 3 subtract my 6 is minus 3. So therefore, my quadratic is x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. From here, super easy to solve. I simply add 3 to both sides, so 3 is equal to x squared. 
So therefore, square rooting both sides gives me x is equal to plus or minus root 3. In summary, to solve algebraic fractions, it's important to use a range of prerequisite knowledge involving solving basic equations, knowledge on addition, subtraction, multiplication, fractions, as well as solving quadratic equations. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.